Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to BIOS flash and recover from bad BIOS flashes on AMD GPUs. I'm going to be using an uh, RX Vega here provided by uh, alza.co.uk. They're an online retailer. Uh, they do, well, they do have things like LN2 ports as well as just the usual graphics cards, motherboards, RAM. So, you know, uh, big thanks to them for providing the card, and you might want to go check them out if you're anywhere in Europe or the UK. Anyway, let's get right into this. So, we're gonna flash the this Vega, we're gonna flash it down to a Vega 56, and then I'm gonna intentionally flash a bad BIOS so the car doesn't boot, and then we're gonna fix the bad BIOS flash and it's gonna work again, right? So, not really that difficult, not that complicated. Um, all you're gonna need to do all of this is ATI flash. So um, I'm gonna be using ATI flash 2.77. This is just to prove that yes, we are on a Vega 64. You can tell because we have that 1630 mh uh, megahertz there. Um, I'm not sure if the shader count will change um, when we flash it down because I've never, well, I did flash it down once before but I didn't bother to check uh, shader counts. So anyway, um, now, uh, with ATI flash, the first thing you always do before any BIOS flashing is back up your BIOS. So, to back up your BIOS, uh, I just use this script. Um, I'll try paste it into the U YouTube comments. It's uh, You can just make a batch file of it. It's this file right here. So, yeah. And you actually, the only functional part of this is that. the All of this extra stuff is basically to... Well, this part is useful so that the console doesn't shut uh, close on you as soon as some kind of error comes up. Anyway, Windows 10 has a few weird hiccups with this, so if we try to go back up BIOS, we're gonna get this error. Windows OS requirements, yeah, yeah, I know, Windows is uh, being Windows. So to get around that, we're just gonna run that as administrator. That is just the capture card screwing up. It's not a problem with the GPU. <laughs> Um, anyway, let's, uh, back up the BIOS now. This doesn't take that long, and as you can see, it's already done. So now we get a BIOS backup file, um, and, and you should back this up. You should put this everywhere. It's like, if you're on a reference card, it's not really a big deal, because on reference cards, like, there's a million and one different BIOSes that'll work, and they're readily available on the internet. If you have a custom PCB GPU, um, you can end up in a situation where you're the only person who tried to flash it and nobody else ever uploaded a BIOS for your card. If you lose your backup or don't make a backup, you're screwed, like completely screwed. So keep track of this. Always keep track of this. It's better if you don't have to rely on somebody else having backed up the file um, rather than like if you just have your own version, it's better. So always, always back up. Now that we have a backup, I'm going to go grab a BIOS that we're actually going to flash. So let me just go here and uh, Vega stuff. And we're going to use a V56 Vanilla. So that's just a unmodified Vega 56 BIOS. If the capture card could cooperate today, that'd be great, wouldn't it? I'm not actually sure what's causing that. It might be because I'm running like 5 meters of uh, HDMI with like a really dodgy uh, connector in, in the middle of all that, so, yeah, but anyway, let's go to here, paste that in, and for flashing, I just use this script, which requires that I rename the BIOS file, obviously, I could just change that to just go v56 vanilla, but I prefer having a system where I, I'll just rename that, and now we can go flash BIOS, And normal, like, if you didn't have all the extra stuff in the batch file around the card, then right now it would have just closed for you automatically, but ROM not erased. We Oh, I have GPU-Z open. Yeah, you shouldn't leave GPU-Z open. So this is 877Z. Let's flash BIOS. Still getting an error. That is very odd, and you can see it's telling me new BIOS version 766, so... Seven, okay, actually we might not be 
This is convenient. So a lot of AMD reference cards come with one BIOS, which is write protected. We might be on that one. So I'll shut the card down and um, we'll see if we can flash the other chip, uh, other BIOS chip, because as you can see, we've not changed BIOS versions. And if the freaking system could stop doing that, that'd be great. Flick the switch before the system starts. There might be a bad BIOS on that one right now, so... Okay, now there isn't. Um, getting display output. And there we go. So we're going to try that again. Um, we have a backup, we have a flash BIOS. So first, we're going to run that as administrator, otherwise, it's not going to work. And then flash BIOS. Yeah, okay, so we were on the looks like I was on the right protected one before. Or maybe I've hit it now. I'm not sure. This is Kinda a bit of a delicate process, like having certain applications opened will... Okay, yeah, it was just a case of I was on the wrong BIOS. So now we're on the 877, uh, the 8766 BIOS. So if we open up GPU-Z right now, we can see we're on 8766. The... there. And so now we're going to shut down and restart. And one thing a lot of people don't realize is the first time you boot a BIOS flash card, Windows will have to re-recognize the card. Like, if you installed your drivers, your drivers will not initially work with the card after flashing uh, to a completely different BIOS. Because Windows won't know what the card is, so it'll take a while to do the whole uh, installing drivers for new device thing. And once it gets past that, it'll work again. Um, sometimes you might even end up having to completely reinstall the drivers, but generally you can rely on Windows to eventually recognize the card. So there we are. We're back in, and let's just go into GPU-Z. And as you can see, GPU-Z is displaying nothing because the drivers haven't initialized yet. So at this point, the... The, the whole screen flashing on and off, that's just Windows 10 doing its driver thing. On Windows 7, you would actually require a whole separate uh, system restart right now. But as you can see, we can now open Radeon settings. So GPU-Z should tell us that we are now on a Vega 56. And we are indeed, as the shader count is now 3,584. And we're at 1,590 megahertz core clock. This is originally a Vega 64. So, yeah. Um, and now let's break this card. Um... This is very easy. We're, we're going to make a copy of BIOS.ROM. Um, and we're going to... Okay, we're going to... Well, actually, I don't need to keep a copy of that because I have a Vega 56 vanilla somewhere else. I'm going to rename that to BIOS. So actually, that was completely pointless, everything I just did. Um, and then we're going to... We need to open this. And we're going to open this with Notepad because I just want to break it. There. Oh, lovely. So th this is what, like, the internals of your AMD BIOS look like. And if we just go pretty much anywhere here, this is a Vega card. You don't have to do much to make these not start. But we're just going to do that, you know. Um, that That's going to make the card absolutely love us. So we're going to save that. Now we're going to flash this. So that's, that's definitely bad. Yeah, you can even see I've changed the, the file size. A real AMD Vega BIOS is going to be 256. And AMD GPU BIOSes vary inside. But for a Vega 56, you're looking at a 256 kilobyte file at the smallest. For like HD 7000 series, you're looking at like 128. Though sometimes you can get files that are 64 kilobytes. If it's not you know, if it's not 64, 128, 256, or even like, I think some cards use a 512 kilobyte BIOS. Um, if it's not one of these sizes, it's not actually a GPU BIOS. So this right here is completely wrong. 
but ATI Flash will still try to flash it. So, everything else is closed, so we just need to run as administrator again. And Flash BIOS. And as you can see right off the bat, we can see we're, we're, we're like, this confirms that I screwed up that BIOS completely because we have no new BIOS version. But if you modify your BIOS, your new BIOS version will actually also disappear. So that doesn't actually necessarily tell you that you're doing something wrong. Um, I have a lot of BIOSes which are perfectly fine for like RX 400 series or HD 7000 series cards where they will not show a BIOS version. Uh, but they are completely working BIOSes. And as you can see, everything seems to think it's fine and dandy. Let's see if GPU-Z is still... Yeah, GPU-Z is very confused. We can see that the BIOS version is just completely trashed. If we restart the system now, we're not going to be actually... Uh, <laughs> GPU-Z seems to have completely crashed, actually. I guess it didn't catch... I guess I deleted whatever was uh, terminating the, the BIOS version statement for GPU-Z. Anyway, let's restart... And I'm actually going to move the camera a bit to show you the postcode right now. To show you that this is not working. This is just the motherboard being this motherboard. So. I'm waiting it for, I'm waiting for it to just hang on a 96. And yeah, this is normally when the GPU initializes. That's a B2 code. Wait. Are we? And yeah. So you can see. Um, well, actually, you can't see. But right now, we have no monitor output. And that thing is basically... Basically, the GPU hasn't been picked up at all. So what do we do about this? We shut the system down. Shut the system down. Shut down, you useless pile of garbage. There. So we turned off. Switch the BIOS switch. Turn on. And we should be in Windows very soon. So the reason why dual BIOS GPUs are so damn helpful with BIOS flashing is the BIOS of a GPU is only read once, um, unless you open up a program specifically to read the GPU BIOS. And as you can see, Windows is reinitializing the AMD driver, which is why the screen is flashing again. Um, but eventually it should start working. Yeah, okay, so AMD driver is now loaded up. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to switch the BIOS switch because that BIOS chip is not being accessed by anything. Um, applications like GPU-Z, when they give you your BIOS version, they actually go and read the BIOS to do that, which is why something like GPU-Z uh, and a few other monitoring programs can cause conflicts when trying to run ATI flash. So we've flicked over to the, you know, not, prote not right protected BIOS. And we're going to take up my backup BIOS, and we're going to rename that to uh, BIOS. We're going to delete the trashed BIOS. And we're just going to rename the backup to BIOS, and then we're just going to go flash BIOS, and the card will start working again. Uh, right. We need to do that thing first. Run as admin. Flash BIOS. Yeah, and as you can see, even ATI Flash is having a hard time recognizing the, like, it can't recognize the messed up BIOS from before. And it flashed, so we're just going to make a preliminary check that that worked by opening GPU-Z and getting GPU-Z to read the BIOS right now. So GPU-Z read the BIOS. It is, in fact, the correct version now. So let's restart. Give the motherboard some time. <laughs> it's being unnecessarily difficult. And there we go, you know, display output, no issues, 
didn't need to flick the switch again. And the card is fully back to basically working like, well, I'll just wait for it to get into Windows, then we'll have to wait for the drivers to come back, I think. Or maybe we won't. Let's see. Yeah, we won't even need to wait for the drivers because Windows already remembers this card. So there, um, we now have a, we're back on the Vega 64 BIOS. So that is how you BIOS flash your card. And if for some reason your BIOS gets corrupted by like a power outage or you smashing your face into the keyboard while the BIOS is open um, and the card stops posting, no issues. You literally just flick the switch at boot up. Like you flick to the non-screwed up BIOS. You get into the OS. Then once you're in the OS, you switch to the broken BIOS. You flash over the broken one, and you're good to go again. Um, it really doesn't get easier. This is exactly why I consider dual BIOS such a hugely important, uh, you know, um, functionality for like high-end GPUs because it's like here I actually went and intentionally broke the BIOS, right? But um, if you have a power outage or if just like your system randomly crashes in the middle of a BIOS flash, you can end up in the very same situation. And if you don't have a BIOS switch, it's a lot harder to recover from, which I will do a video on one day how to deal with that. But um, that, that would make this too long. So yeah, that's it for how to flash the BIOS on AMD GPUs and how to recover it if they have a dual BIOS switch. Thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave a comment or questions down below. Um, if you would like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a PayPal, a Patreon, there's shirts, you can find all of those in a link down in the description below. And that's it. So, see you next time. Wait, why am I trying to shut this down? I'm supposed to stop the video. I'm like, <laughs> shut down the computer, stop, okay. Anyway, now for real. Goodbye.